وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار My beloved brothers and sisters As we are all aware of Islam is لكل زمان ومكان Islam is befitting for every time and place There is not a situation that we go through Except Islam has a response, an answer, a cure for whatever it may be. Recently, what has been circulating over the news, social media, is the death of a man who in this country that we live in today is highly respected in the academic world. And I have an aim and objective in why I'm mentioning this, inshallah ta'ala. The individual is Stephen Hawkins. Stephen Hawkins uh, is he's an English theoretical physicist, a, co- a cosmologist, and an author who wrote many books. He occupied, at a particular time, the seat of the father of physics, Isaac Newton. And before Stephen Hawkins, only 17 people actually occupied that seat, as they say. So he's highly respected in the academic world. His field of expertise is two fields that he he specialized in, general relativity and quantum gravity. Stephen uh, Stephen Hawkins authored a book many years back, and I managed to read it. It's called The Grand Design. And in this book, he speaks about the history of scientific knowledge. He also speaks about the universe, and he also explains the 11 dimension, the M theory, basically. And in this book, he he argues that invoking God is not necessary anymore. We don't need to believe in God's existence. Especially, we've now got answers for the origins of the universe. So he's a mulhid, he's an atheist. So why am I mentioning this? I was reading some forums and social media outlets, youngsters, youths, our brothers, our sisters who go to university, and their discussion was revolving around two main points. And that is, he might have died as a Muslim. Allah might have forgiven him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who are we to judge him? And some Muslims will say, he is a disbeliever. He may even be from the kuffar, but may Allah forgive him. Allah does as he wishes, he forgives who he wants. Statements like this. So because of that, inshallah ta'ala, I want to speak regarding what the sharia believes this allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he tells us in the quran he says inna alladhina kafaru min ahli alkitab wal mushrikeen fi nar jahannam khalidin fiha ulaika hum sharrul bariyah allah tells us in this verse he says inna alladhina the ones kafaru who disbelieve in allah the jews and the christians allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he tells us that they are in the hellfire. في نار جهنم خالدين فيها. That they are in the hellfire and they will stay there forever. And then Allah tells us, أولئك هم شر البرية. And that they are the worst of people. In another, uh, in, in a hadith, sorry. In a hadith collected by Al-Imam al-Bukhari and Muslim. من حديث أبي هريرة. 
The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, لا يسمع بي أما والذي نفسي بيده I swear by the Lord in which my soul is in his hand لا يسمع بي أحد No one hears of me من هذه الأمة from this أمة يهودي whether he's a Jew ولا نصراني ولا نصراني or he can be a Christian ولم يؤمن بالذي أرسلت به and he doesn't believe in that which I have been sent out with نبي الله محمد he doesn't believe in it. He rejects it. He turns away from it. إلا كان من أصحاب النار except that person is going to be from the inhabitants of the hellfire. The hellfire is going to be his final, is going to be his final abode. And as you can see from these nusus, which are all muhkam, crystal clear, كالشمسو في رابعة النهار, that anybody who dies upon a way other than the Prophet's way and does not believe in the Prophet's message and does not believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's oneness in worship, He's not a believer, let alone a person who doesn't believe if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exists or not. It's even worse. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he tells us, he says in another ayah, وَلَقَدْ ذَرَأْنَا لِجَهَنَّمَ كَثِيرًا مِنَ الْجِنِّ وَالْإِنسِ لَهُمْ قُلُوبٌ لَا يَفْقَهُونَ بِهَا وَلَهُمْ أَعْيُنٌ لَا يُبْصِرُونَ بِهَا وَلَهُمْ آذَانٌ لَا يَسْمَعُونَ بِهَا أُولَٰئِكَ كَالْأَنْعَامِ بَلْ أُولَٰئِكَ كَالْأَنْعَامِ أُولَٰئِكَ كَالْأَنْعَامِ بَلْ هُمْ أَضَلُّ أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْغَافِلُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he tells us that he has certainly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has certainly prepared the hellfire for many of the children of Adam and many of the jinn. They have with them, Allah tells us. لَهُمْ قُلُوبٌ لَا يَفْقَهُونَ بِهَا They have hearts, but they truly don't understand. He might be the most smartest academic. He might be a, uh, a cosmologist. He can be whatever he may be. And he doesn't believe in Allah. Allah tells us, لَهُمْ قُلُوبٌ لَا يَفْقَهُونَ بِهَا he, they have hearts, but they don't understand. وَلَهُمْ أَعْيُنٌ لَا يُبْصِرُونَ بِهَا Eyes, but they can't see the truth. وَلَهُمْ آذَانٌ They have ears. لَا يَسْمَعُونَ بِهَا Which they can't hear the truth when it comes to them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tells us, أُولَٰئِكَ كَالْأَنْعَامِ Those people are like the livestock. They are like the cattle. And Allah then tells us, subhanahu wa ta'ala, that they are even more astray than the cattle. And Allah tells us that they are what? That they are from the heedless ones. In another ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he tells us, أَفَرَأَيْتَ مَنِ اتَّخَذَ إِلَاهَهُ هَوَاهُ أَفَأَنْتَ تَكُونُ عَلَيْهِ وَكِيلًا أَمْ تَحْسَبُ أَنَّ أَكْثَرَهُمْ يَسْمَعُونَ أَوْ يَعْقِلُونَ إِنْهُمْ إِلَّا كَلَنْعَامِ بَلْ هُمْ أَضَلُّ سَبِيلًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, Do you not see Muhammad? Those who follow their desires, they've made their desires their Lord. That's what governs them. Whatever their desires tell them, tell them they follow it. What it tells them to stay away from, they stay away from. Their ilah is their desires. Then Allah tabarak wa ta'ala says to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Are you going to be a wakil, a representative for those individuals? Am tahsabu, do you think anna aktharahum, that the majority of these people, yasma'oon, that they hear, or ya'aqiloon, or they even have aql, the intellects that they claim that they have. Do you think many of them have it? Allah says that these individuals are nothing except like the livestock, even worse than it. Even more astray than it. And the reason the watch was shabah between them and the animal is that the animals, as Allah says in Surah Muhammad, وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا The disbelievers, يَتَمَتَّعُونَ وَيَأْكُلُونَ كَمَا تَأْكُلُوا الْأَنْعَامُ وَالنَّارُ مَثْوًا لَهُمْ That they eat and they enjoy themselves. In this world, just like the animal. But at least the animal doesn't have intellect. He's غير مكلف. He's not burdened to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to fast. But these were people were, brains were given to them and they went astray. So a people who Allah has spoken about like that, for a believer to come and then to justify their disbelief, it's very worrying. Well, Shaykh al-Islam, Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab rahimahullah, authored a book where he called it Nawaqid al-Islam. One of the things that nullify a person's Islam. And from the third naqid, the third nullifier he mentions, مَن لَمْ يُكَفِّرِ الْمُشْرِكِينَ أَوْ شَكَّ فِي كُفْرِهِمْ أَوْ صَحَّحَ مَذْهَبَهُمْ كَافَرَ إِجْمَعًا Shaykh al-Islam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab, he says, the one who does not label the disbelievers, the idol worshippers, the polytheists, he doesn't label them as disbelievers. He doesn't see them. He thinks, mm, Allahu alam. He doesn't. أَوْ شَكَّ فِي كُفْرِهِمْ Or he doubts their kufr. And he says, who are we to judge? أو صحح مذهبهم أو he justifies their belief and he, and he says religions are like seas, rivers, lakes, ponds 
They have different names, but they all contain water. Religions are different names, but they all contain the truth. أو صحح مذهبهم كلام فلسفي أو صحح مذهبهم كفارة إجماعا محمد بن عبد الوهاب he says they are disbelievers by consent and he's not the first person to transmit that consent he was preceded in that consent before him قاضي عياض in his كتاب الشفاء he transmits a إجماع in the second volume of his كتاب الشفاء شيخ الإسلام ابن تيمية in his مجموع الفتاوى he brings the إجماع عبد الله بن عبد الرحمن أبو بطين he brings it in الدرة السنية the إجماع that this matter is disbelief is known by consent so it's a very worrying matter that a person will do this the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم wrote a letter to Hirak العظيم الروم he wrote a letter to him and the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم told him to come into Islam and from the things that the Prophet said to him عليه الصلاة والسلام he said فإن توليت if you turn around and you dismiss what I have told you, and you turn away from it, فَعَلَيْكَ إِثْمُ الْأَرِيسِيِّينَ Upon you is the sin of your people. Your people's sin will be on your shoulders, because you're the one who misguided them. And as I said to you before, this individual, he wrote a book, he called it The Grand Design. And in this book of his, he calls clearly to atheism and disbelief. يحملون أوزارهم كاملة يوم القيامة ومن أوزار الذين يضلونهم بغير علم على ساعة ما يزيرون. He will not only take his own sins, but he's going to take the sins of the millions of people or the thousands of people, the thousands of the people in which he has called into disbelief. أقول ما تسمعون وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين من كل ذنب فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger place kufr on a people no one has the rights to come after that and to say if Allah wishes, He will forgive them. Or these people, Allahu A'lam, if they're disbelievers, takfir and labeling a person as a non-believer, this is the rights of Allah. And if He does it, we do it. And if His Prophet labels a people disbelievers, we also do the same. As Shaykh al-Islam, Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah, he says, he says, Al-Kufru haqqu Allahi thumma rasulihi bin nasi yathbutu la bi qawli fulani man kana rabbu al-alameen wa rasooluhu قَدْ كَفَّرَاهُ فَذَاكَ ذُو الْكُفْرَانِ Ibn al-Qayyim says, Al-Kufr is the rights of Allah and His Messenger. Al-Kufr, حَقُّ اللَّهِ ثُمَّ رَسُولِهِ It's Allah and His Messenger's rights. They can give it to whoever they wish. بِالنَّصِّ يَثْبُتُ لَا بِقَوْلِ فُلَانِ Kufr can be established by a textual evidence, not by the statement of a scholar. However high a scholar is, he's not the one who is able to give takfir on a person. It's the rights of Allah and His Messenger. مَنْ كَانَ رَبُّ الْعَالَمِينَ Anyone who Allah, the Lord of the heavens and the earth, placed takfir on him. وَرَسُولُهُ and his messenger placed takfir on. فَقَدْ كَفَّرَاهُ فَذَاكَ ذُو الْكُفْرَانِ Then this person is a disbeliever. The Jews and the Christians and the atheists and the communists and the socialists and the, all of them, Allah and his messenger made takfir on them. We place takfir on those people Allah and his messenger have. I now move on to the second part in which I want to speak about my, in my khutbah, which is, once we have proven that these individuals are disbelievers, are we then allowed to say, Oh Allah, forgive them? And can we do a tarahum on the disbelievers? Do we have the rights to do so? The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, لَمَّا حَضَرَتْ أَبَا طَالِبٍ الْوَفَاهِ When Abu Talib, death came to him, or oh, he, oh, he was on his deathbed, دخل عليه رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. The messenger entered onto him. وعنده أبو جهل وعبد الله بن أبي أمية. أبو جهل was on one side of Abu Talib, and the other side, عبد الله بن أبي أمية was on the other side. And so the messenger entered onto his uncle, and he said to his uncle, أي عم قل لا إله إلا الله كلمة أحاج لك عند الله 
say this word, La ilaha illallah. Uhaju laka, I will argue on your behalf. Biha indallahi. Beside Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I will argue for you. Just say, La ilaha illallah. Faqala Abu Jahal, wa Abdullah ibn Abi Umayyah. Abu Jahal, and Abdullah ibn Abi Umayyah. Fir'aun had the Ummah, Abu Jahal, and Abdullah ibn Abi Umayyah. Both said to the, Prophet, uh, the Prophet's uncle, Abu Talib, they said to him, Ya Abu Talib, O Abu Talib, Atargabu an millati Abdul Muttalib, are you going to desire other than the religion of your granddad? Abdul uh, the, the religion of your father, Abdul Muttalib, are you going to take a religion other than his? Other than his? Then the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam looked over his uncle and his uncle responded by saying, Huwa ala millati Abdul Muttalib. Abu Talib is upon the religion of his father, Abdul Muttalib. So he died that way. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, loving his uncle, looked at the situation and he said the following. He said, La astaghfiranna laka ma lam unha'an. I will ask forgiveness for you ma lam unha'anka as long as I am not prevented from it. I will ask Allah to forgive you. And I will ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to not hold you account for what you've said and done. Then the ayah came down. مَا كَانَ لِلنَّبِي وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَنْ يَسْتَغْفِرُوا لِلْمُشْرِكِينَ وَلَوْ كَانُوا أُولِي قُرْبًا مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا تَبَيَّنَ لَهُمْ أَنَّهُمْ أَصْحَابُ الْجَحِيمِ It is not permissible for the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the believers after it becomes clear to them that this person is a disbeliever and he died upon that way, that you ask forgiveness for that individual, it is not permissible. And then Allah reminds the believers, just so they may not say, what about Ibrahim who said to his father, سَأَسْتَغْفِرَنَّ لَكَ I will ask Allah's forgiveness for you. What about him? Then Allah responded by saying, وَمَا كَانَ اسْتِغْفَارُ إِبْرَاهِيمَ لِأَبِيهِ إِلَّا عَمْ مَوْعِضَةٍ وَعَدَهَا إِيَّاهِ فَلَمَّا تَبَيَّنَ لَهُ أَنَّهُ عَدُوٌ, لل... أنه عدو لِلَّهِ تَبَرَّأَ مِنْ Ibrahim, his forgiveness for his Lord was only a period of time. He was also told to stop it. And then he withheld from it. So asking forgiveness for them is not permissible. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already told us that these individuals, Allah won't forgive them. And this is from the sunnah of, sunnah of Allah. It will not change for anybody. Allah says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا وَصَدُّوا عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ ثُمَّ مَاتُوا وَهُمْ كُفَّارٌ فَلَنْ يَغْفِرَ اللَّهُ لَهُمْ Allah tells us subhanahu wa ta'ala that those who died and they block the people from the path of Allah, Allah is not going to forgive them. And this is something that Allah has destined, the most merciful, the one that is more generous and kind to us than our mother is, has told us, فَلَنْ يَغْفِرَ اللَّهُ لَهُمْ Allah is not going to forgive them. إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَغْفِرُ أَنْ يُشْرَكَ بِهِ وَيَغْفِرُ مَا دُونَ ذَلِكَ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ Allah forgives anything below shirk. As for the one who dies upon disbelief, Allah doesn't forgive them. إِنَّهُ مَنْ يُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ فَقَدْ حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ الْجَنَّةِ وَمَأْوَاهُ النَّارِ وَمَا لِلظَّالِمِنَ مِنْ أَنصَارِ Anyone who dies on that, Allah has made Jannah haram from them. So we need to believe in that. We shouldn't be worried and concerned what others may say. This is the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I want to also bring to the attention of many parents. The parents generally nowadays, they get concerned about their children who are on the streets, who are selling drugs and alcohol, who are up to no good. Those children, they deserve us working on them, guiding them and bringing them to the religion and making them practice their deen as they should do. But there are also another group of youngsters and our children who are also in a situation sometimes even worse than those who are on the streets, which is those who go to universities, who are studying these academic sciences, such as philosophy, and they're studying these courses, and they come out, and some of them have atheistic beliefs, and many of them have visited me in this masjid. They told me not to tell their parents that they have doubts about Allah's existence, subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether he exists. Doubts have been thrown into their hearts. I studied linguistics in university. What has linguistics got to do with religion? But in the course that I was doing, in the linguistics course, I was being told, does language 
Is it an innate ability? Is it something that is built within us? And so the teacher said that theory is wrong. Language is not innate ability. And the reason I asked, what was the reason she doesn't want to believe in the innate ability that we have of language? Because she wants to dismiss that there is a God that placed that language in you. Ya ikhwa, the battle and the fight against Allah and the religion is very deep. We need to be sharp. We need to know what's taking place around us. And we need to equip, equip ourselves with our religion and learn what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's deen is calling us to. Allahumma ghfir lana dhunubana wa israfana fi amrina wa thabbit aqdamana wa ansurna ala al-qawm al-kafirin. Allahumma ghfir lana hazlana wa jiddana wa khata'ana wa amdana wa kullu dhalik indana ya rabbal alameen. Allahumma la taj'ali dunya akbara hammina wa la mablaga ilmina wa la tusallit alayna bidhunubina man la yakhafuka fina wa la yarhamuna. رب آت نفوسنا تقواها وزكها أنت خير من زكاها أنت وليها ومولاها ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وأقم الصلاة